what we know. It's very lockstep process. It's very prescriptive. I think when we're talking about whole building energy efficiency, if we really want to have an impact, if we really want to have change culture, we got to change the culture of design. You know, it's more at SD so that DD and CD go smoother. If we're going to change design, we're going to change culture, we have to change the way we approach uh, designing buildings. Broken link linkages, as I was talking about, you've got these inner kind of conversations that are happening and decisions are being made. Um, that could be detrimental to the end result of the project. Um, minimal effort at schematic, right? Um, hey, I need a design so that I can go to the, the board for approval, or I need a design so I can go to the community and show them something. Give me something quick, right, so we can price it. This, the effort at schematic to, to what Dan was talking about is just like a process. We need, to, we need to really think about, or at least rethink about, our approach to schematic design. Isolated design decision, bare bones value engineering. And we've, I've got some old examples in entire communities like Fairfax County where they like prototype. We want this boiler. So one project, they value out like a condensing boiler for whatever reason. They did some quick back of the envelope calculation on one little project. We came in and looked at that value engineering and said, wait a minute, this is way off. First of all, the cost savings are wrong. You didn't account for this. this the energy savings aren't correct. We did some very low-level, low-cost analysis, and now the county is doing that everywhere. That little change, that kind of impact, um, you know, for things like that, is that, you know, one of the problems, again, we're all working in a tough environment, cost, price, everything is sensitive. Um, but if we can find some time to work in some of these assessments, I think we'll see better products down the road. Integrated, okay. Holistic design, you like the word, you don't like the word. Stakeholder involvement. <coughs> You've got a more dynamic dialogue here. You know, this is, we see a lot of this done in hospitals where everybody needs to, to, to bring in their input. Intuitive wayfinding, stakeholders, <coughs> the GCs on board so they have an understanding of things. The commissioning agent, a lot of this lead 2012 is gonna start requiring the commissioning agent to be on earlier so that when they're doing their design reviews, they understand the dialogue for the decision. You know, a lot of times when you come in on the outside and you look at something real quick, why don't we do this, why don't we do that? There's no history or timeline of the decision. Feed information to that loop. That's my goal. What do you want to know? What information do you need? Life cycle, return on investment. What's the decision? What's the information that's going to make that decision for you? So you, you may not go that route. You may assign the same technology, but at least you have the information to make that decision. You're capitalizing on your opportunities and you're making investment grade decisions. I mean, that's the, the ultimate goal of energy analysis, not accounting lead points, if we want to have a real impact. It's basically a whole hourly, whole building energy performance analysis. It's a performance prediction holistic for prescriptive. We're looking at everything together. You know, we're not looking at the glass and value out that because it, it costs an extra dollar per square foot, not realizing that it saved 20 percent on the capacity of the mechanical system. And what's the net cost of the whole building? Um, energy modeling, um, just like anything else, is it's a model. You're basically using history, you're using assumptions, you're using your experience with building operation to make informed judgments of, about future properties. All things, all things else equal. That's the most important thing here. We get asked, I'll get asked all the time, Mike, I need you to predict the exact consumption so that I can go to underwriting and da 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 I don't know the tenant. I don't know what you're gonna do with the space. I don't know what the weather's gonna be like. That's not the intent of modeling. On the back end, when you start doing things like measurement and verification, you can start doing that kind of stuff. But really the intent is, all things else equal, what if I change this, right? Simple stuff, lighting, you know, system, wall, anything in your building, occupancy in your building. What if I use a different utility rate structure? We've done models just to look at one building and different climates and maximizing utility structure so that you're not getting hit with a demand charge in an area for a specific building that would really cost you a lot. So 
you know, it's really all things else. What can we expect with this change? I already talked about it, delta versus magnitude. Um, you know, and, and then the tools, you know. These are the kind of programs you may have heard. Trace 700 and HAP, um, these are the programs a lot of MEPs use to do this analysis. Um, Do2 and Energy Plus, um, are a lot of the consultants will use those. Um, Train is really improving their software. Um, HAP is, again, these, these are really good for what they were designed to do in my opinion, which is design building. So it looks at, it's really good at capacities. Um, and I'm really hopeful with uh, the train guy in the background that we start looking at operational energy and not just does it meet the 1% condition when it's 100 degrees outside and there's a thousand people in the building because that's what MEPs care about. Period. Team to make good decisions. I'm just the accountant. And it's up to all of us in this room to make decisions and go out on a leap of faith to try some of these technologies. Um, all we're trying to do is give you the information to make that decision. Energy efficient commercial building tax deduction, 179D. Already a lot of you have heard of that. It may expire with the way things are going in Congress at the end of 2013. So if you're building anything beyond that point, that deduction might not be there. We do a lot of analysis for this. Um, it's, one thing I'd like to say on that is that it's compared to ASHRAE. A lot of people think, oh, I replaced this system, it was 40 years old, I'm saving all this energy, why am I not getting a tax deduction? Well, the government's perspective on that is you should probably should replace that already. So they're looking at it re relative to current code. So we do a lot of energy modeling for, for tax deductions. Um, got a couple for tower. <laughs> Hopefully they were successful. Um, Utility rebates and incentives, this is a growing market. Uh, we've done them for BG&E, PEPCO, um, the DC Sustainable Energy Utility. Um, these are all Dominion Power. They all have different structures. Um, and they're all structured relative to the importance of that particular utility. Utilities are interested in sort of selling power, right? So why would they want to sell less power? They're okay with that if they can sell it elsewhere. So what they do is they gather a small fraction on your utility bill and then they give it to the big consumer. So what we do is we start to analyze things using the energy model to get rebates. And I got a couple examples of those. Building performance assessments and audits, that's more existing type work where we'll use the model to basically calibrate to existing consumption. We'll look at what's going on. We'll, we'll basically identify opportunities um, and evaluate measures. Uh, measurement and verification, again, we could do a whole speech, a whole thing on any one of these. Um, we're starting to do that more now. That was kind of...